let's check. Hey, Gadfiles. Hello. Hello, Gadfiles. Welcome to our live Q&A all about the liver, energy, and gut health here today on Thursday, January 28th. Um, greetings from Mexico. 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 I'm in Bacalar at the moment, which is, if you imagine Mexico, which basically is like a continent um, for my feeling. Um, and you have like Yucatan, the peninsula Yucatan, and it's a little bit on the, um, on the south part, so in the west of Mexico, at a lagoon. It's also called the Maldives of Mexico. So it's really, really nice. And yeah, greetings. In case it's cold for you right now, I'm sending lots of sunshine and lots of heat. I actually need the, I don't have air conditioning, but I have these fans. I actually have them in the back, just on one. Um, so it doesn't make too much noise, but I'm still going to sweat, um, so you have proof that I'm actually in the tropics. Okay, guys, how is everybody doing? Where are you coming from? What are you doing? I would love to hear. Um, so welcome, Mark and Swanson McKenzie, Lynn, Katie, Magda, Health and Hygiene, William. We got George in the house, Aka Trimbaker. April, hello, hi from the UK, sending lots of heat over there. I know it's probably cold and wet. I lived in Scotland for three years and the nights were very dark. Hi, Krista, Maria. Let me know if you can hear me well, by the way, guys. I have this lovely external microphone. Let me know if you can hear me well, by the way, guys. I have this lovely external microphone over here, which you can't see because too. Hi, San. Hello from Texas, Australia. Wow. So let me know if you can hear me well. How is the connection? I have two internet options now, so I can change in case this is not the best one. Let me know. Hi, James. How's the internet connection, guys? Can you hear me well? And is my, am I, uh, how do you say? Is it on time or do you hear me later and you see my voice moving and it doesn't fit? Yes, very clear. I love that. We're out of Guatemala. The internet is better. No offense. Can you hear well? Great. Thank you, April. Hey, that's the shortest, the shortest YouTube name ever. You probably joined in 1996 when YouTube was invented. I don't know. Probably did. All right, guys. <laughs> Great. So... I thought as we are all gathering here and I'm sweating, if you want, I could show you like just a few seconds. I could give you a little apartment tour if you're interested because I'm staying here for a little bit. You want to give me a yes or a no? Greetings. Hi, Beatrice. I think that means Texas. Let me know. Do you want a little short apartment tour or not? I don't have to. You know, I'm a private person. I don't have to. Oh, you got five more seconds to let I don't have to. Oh, you got five more seconds to let me know. I'm counting. <laughs> Great. Okay, guys. All right. Hi, Dove. Awesome. Good. That's all I need. I need five yeses, and that's it. Thank you, guys. All right. So here we go. The good thing is it's just one room, so it's going to be quick. <laughs> Paul, you're not going to think about it. So, okay, so basically, here's the entrance. This is the entrance. So I, the computer is in the entrance, and this is how you come in. So maybe we start with the terrace, you know? I don't, I'm not one of those vloggers who shows like, oh, this is my underwear, and this is my thingy all the time. So let's just start here. So this is my little terrace here. It's actually pretty big. It's not little. Look at those guys here. Oh, wait. Turn this around. You see these here, my exercise kit? Da, 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 da. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, then we have terrace here. Chill out area. Some nice palm trees. They're, they're just um, building. <laughs> they're very nice. My hosts are very nice. So they're building some bamboo around the air condition that the other two apartments have downstairs where they live. And so it doesn't make so much noise. Isn't that cute? They're very, very cool people. So then you go in here. Mosquitoes are everywhere, so we have those thingies here. So you come in here. Um, this is my, my cool setup for the live Q&A, the salad bowl. There's the bed, obviously, and the fan I talked about, the kitchen. 
it's all there. It's very, very short um, thingy. Then we had some here as all my, my half food stuff, wheat grass and stuff, because we had some little ants which are eating everything and I needed to clear everything. Uh, yeah, bathroom, go ahead. Really nice shower, guys. Really nice shower. I love this thingy big shower here. Yeah, that's about it. And then we have a balcony. Because who who doesn't want a balcony and a terrace, right? If you can have everything. I'm usually sitting out here with my table that you just saw in the living room. And then, yeah, I know the view is pretty cool. You see the bananas? How do you show? It's difficult to show. There, bananas. Yeah, it's actually pretty hot right now. So let's just close the fucking door. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh yeah, and my huge closet. No, it's not huge. It's very minimalistic. All right, that's it. That's it. You like it? Anybody wants to move in? <laughs> it's very cozy. All right. Connection still good? Peggy's wedding. Look at all those muscles here. Bit of posing. Vegan, vegan, plant-based. Um, <laughs> I don't know, all these people doing it all the time, like, you know, so I could do that too, couldn't I? Bunk beds. <laughs> no, I don't want to be a hostel. Okay, guys, before we get started with the liver and talking about the liver and how to improve your energy and your gut health, because it's all connected to the liver, um, I would love to welcome the new Gut Feelings members, which are basically supporting not basically they are supporting the channel and they're making live q and a's like this happen for example san who is right now on the live call he's one of the gut feeler members and the cool thing about that before i tell you the names the cool thing about that is you get priority in the live q and a's because you basically just pop up your name is green and you have um, our logo behind you and also, if I have time and I can answer some of the questions that are posted on the videos, also the Gut Feelings members, they pop up more and I have more chance to get back to you and you get your questions answered first. So those are some of the benefits, apart from you being an awesome person and supporting the channel and helping others to heal as well and getting that information for free. So welcoming Melody Lule, super new, Alice Johnson, Natasha, Ivanovich, I probably pronounced everything wrong, but you just just guess if it's your name. Uh, e. Jordan, Cole, and Vanessa, W. Risho. Welcome, guys, and I hope you have a great time. I hope you learn a lot from the channel, and feel free to ask and engage like crazy. Okay, Whew. that done. Second thing, we got... I'm so grateful, guys. Uh, some of you already might have um, contact right now with Maria, my assistant. We sent out a, an interview proposal, basically asking people if they would like to do an interview with me about bloating and malabsorption because I'm creating a new course. Yep, I love creating stuff for you. I'm creating a new course, which will be very affordable. And for that, I would love to interview some people and we got my assistant counted, um, well, she stopped at 70. 70 people got back to us and were, were willing and um, ready to share their healing journey and their ups and downs and, um, yeah, just their time for 20 to 30 minutes. So thank you so much. We've got the five spots very gracefully filled uh, in, like, five seconds. And just so you know, if you were one of those people who applied, who wanted to do an interview with me, thank you so much if you're here right now. And we're going to get back to you. Um, everybody who reached out and was willing to do this interview with us, um, you're going to be the first to know when the course comes out. And you're going to get a super generous discount, so we'll make it possible for you to join no matter what's your budget. All right? So this is a first speech. Now let me just check in the... Uh, comments and say hello to a more, few more people. Hi, Jill. Marilyn, hi, Marilyn just joined. Christy, Eve, hello, Sophie, Mackenzie, Swanson, I think I saw you already, Life of Molly, what a nice name. Da -da -da -da. Cesar, Jason, hello, everybody. We're just doing a few um, intros here and then we get started. So we actually get started right now. 
um, for for housekeeping purposes because we're a lot of people, which is great because I love to really grow you and have you here and connect with each other and support each other also in the chat box for making it easier for me to see your question popping up. Please put three question marks as you see a lot of the um, seasoned gut feelers already do. For example, Katie, who's part of our gut feeder academy. Um, she just follow her, model her, uh, put three question marks in front of your question. So I see it popping up as a question. It's not just a comment and you helping each other or just saying hi. Um, another way to stand out if you feel like we're coming to the end and you really need your question answered, um, please do not put like 20 emojis or pu um, push your question like five times the same question. This is called spamming. And um, we have somebody here who will actually help us to remove the spamming so for the for the fairness of everybody. The way to stand out would be to engage in Super Chat, where you can support the channel for whatever amount you want. And this makes you pop up or become a Gut Felix member as um, Sam, for example, who is joining right now. Sounds good. I'm excited. I'm super sweaty. I could shower every five minutes, but I'm super excited to be here with you. OK, so this kind of, you know, very not viral friendly movements here. They are what they are. OK, topic liver care and your gut health and energy, which are connected to your liver. Now, the thing is, if you want to increase your energy and improve your digestive troubles from some liver, now, the thing is, if you want to increase your energy and improve your digestive troubles, for some of us, maybe not for you if you're a seasoned gut feeder, but maybe for you who's just joining for the first time or for the second time, it might be a surprise that actually your energy levels and how your digestion works is 100%, 100% connected to your liver, right upper rib cage, huge organ, one and a half kilos or three pounds, heavy, very dense, and the fast track also to improve your energy and to improve your digestive symptoms is to fall in love with your liver and be really, really, really nice to your liver. So in this, um, in this intro, I would love to discuss the five maybe surprising things that your liver loves. I make this really short and actionable. So if you have something to write stuff down, I always prefer the old fashioned pen because it doesn't die. Um, but you can also put it in your own if you want. Um, so I, I'll, I'll go into that in a, in a second, but before, because it doesn't die. Um, but you can also put it in your phone if you want. Um, so I, I'll, I'll go into that in a, in a second. But before we get there, five things, surprising things, small things that you can do in your daily life to help fall in love with your liver and be really, really nice to your liver. Um, I would like to ask you the opposite. Because this is not going to be a speech I want you to, because you know already a lot. I'm really, really sure. I would like to ask you the opposite. What do you, what are your ideas and what do you think that your liver hates? If you would like to be really, really, really nasty to your liver and do the opposite of what we're talking about, what could you do? Just give me some, some ideas in the, in the chat box. What could you do? Hi, Amiran. What could you do? drink more so we are right now we are looking for nasty stuff so we are looking for what not to do how to insult your liver like crazy because that's usually the easiest ones mary you already won the award alcohol danielle eat cheetos i don't even know what that is it's probably a good sign krista alcohol magda dairy products like milk milk um what else is dairy uh, butter Yogurt. Oh yeah, George. Trim back, get dehydrated. Mila, sugar, question mark. Um, K, lots of sugar and carbs. Gluten, processed food. Um, K, lots of sugar and carbs. Gluten, processed foods. Smoking. <laughs> Daniel, you have amazing ideas. I love it. Smoking, corn, tobacco, fat. Gluten, sugar, no sleep. Oh, I like that one, no sleep. Mm. April, exactly, fried foods. 
Eggs, mm, drink coffee every day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly, Sophie. Drink coffee every day. This is pretty good. You got it, you got it pretty well nailed down. I, I'm sure there's more, but there's always more, right? So here comes the a few of the five things. Let's start with number one because that was already mentioned from Cesar, smart gut feeler. Um, you're all smart. Just <laughs> Don't ever say that. So number one, it's really that simple. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Your liver likes sleep. Why? Because during the time when you're not eating and you're not, you know, the body rests and lies down, the body and your inner organs, including your liver, has time to reju rejuvenate. That's the word. To that. So, so when you're not active, there is the, the cleansing time is the biggest. Also, from your inner organ clock. So all the organs have different times um, that are just universal connected to your body when they are the most active and the most able to restore themselves. And for the liver, that's between 1 and 3 a.m. And for the gallbladder, which is very connected with the liver, it's from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. For the sleep, the most important time to sleep and to rejuvenate, the hours before 12, they count double. So if you can be, you know, like a 10 year old or 14, I don't really know, uh, maybe 10 year old, be in bed by nine would be amazing. That would be great if you can integrate that somehow in your life. 10, that's the latest. 10, if you're, if you're healing and you're suffering and you want to get better, then um, the hours between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. because of your liver, they they, this is the sacred healing window. Medical medium also talks about that. He brought in that term sacred healing window. So um, just quoting him here, him here. So that's the biggest, uh, one of the easiest ways to improve your liver health, just sleep at the right time. And in the beginning, you might be, um, you know, if your cortisol and your adrenaline levels are very much off and you have a very stressed adrenal system and your body is not used to this rhythm, then you might need to adjust a little bit. But once you get into it, it will be so refreshing. Okay, sleep number one. Number two, uh, by the way, what, what are your ideas, guys? What are your ideas? Um, what helps? What your liver loves? What's something, you know, if you would write, like to write soon as Valentine's Day, you would like to make like a really nice present, hopefully over the whole year, not just on Valentine's Day, for your liver. What would that be? What, what could that be? So while you're typing, I'll give you the second one. The second simple thing to do when you want to heal your liver, and we're going together to the fridge right now. By the way, these are all the stuff that I'm doing every day with my happiness coach. I've got a happiness coach. Um, greetings to David if you're watching this. So here we go. Up. Da, 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 da. Second, really, really, really cool thing for your liver. It's as easy as that. And the color is what's the color? Give me a color. Give me a color. The color is green. The color is green. The love for your liver is green. That's the color because it has a ton of electrolytes. Electrolytes, phytochemicals, enzymes, bursting with minerals and um, sometimes also vitamins. This is, by the way, chaya. It's a tropical, tropical thingy also <laughs> grows in Panama. It's a little bit probably has a virus, but not dangerous virus. That one looks better. <laughs> So when we're talking about greens, we're talking about macro and micro greens. Both are important. So this one is a macro green. Yes, it's a macro green. It's a, it's a salad kind of thing. It could, could be a spinach, could be a wild herb like nettle, mm, lots of nutrients, or a cultivated herb like basil, basil or chives, um, or this is a macro green or lettuce, all kinds of lettuces. This is a macro green. And then we have micro greens, micro green, micro greens, micro greens. The heat gets to my head. Eh, sweat. This is not very appetizing. Let's go for that one. Micro green would micro green. Micro green would be wheatgrass or barley grass juice powder, which is very high 
aka impossible to get in Mexico. So wheatgrass, even from Amazon. So I went for wheat, wheatgrass organic. Um, those are microgreens. Also sprouts are a microgreen. And they are really, really important because those microgreens and macrogreens, the electrolytes and the minerals in there will help you to make the detoxification process easier. And they will also minimize the damage that you have from toxins. Got to understand that when you have, uh, when you're suffering from a chronic illness and, you know, you have a lot of liver and overburdened liver, what's happening there is it's very, um, it uses up a lot of the electrolytes and the minerals, zinc included, which is a heavy, healthy, heavy metal. It uses up that on a much faster rate than somebody who's like muscle meals healthy. This is important to know because this is why you can't trust, you know, what's on the back of the of a supplement pill where it says like take one vitamin C pill per day, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, but you might be needing 10 vitamin C pills per day just to make sure you get like the strap. For example, like I had a client um, who has like a urinary tract infection just to get the tra a strap, um, which is a bacteria, under control, you know. So um, really, really, really important for your liver greens. Electrolytes, greens, 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 greens. This is the, the color of love is green. So that's it. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to look at your um, recommendations. What did you come up with? Bitter foods. I like it. I mean, I don't really like bitter foods, but they are really good. Um, celery party. <laughs> Lemon water. Fruit, celery juice, green, green, <laughs> cool. Celery juice, coriander, yeah, coriander, fresh is also really, really cool. Also cilantro and dandelion, amazing, amazing. So let me just show you one, one thing, but you can't taste it. Talking about bitter, this is like a little bit freestyle, but we'll come back to number three in a second. Bitter is really, really good for the liver. So I brought this tea, which is from a shaman. You know, you can see this has a lot of wood and herbs and all kinds of stuff in there. And it said, um, compuesto de higado. Higado means um, Spanish liver. So I was like, cool, kind of liver detox tea. Let's take it. And then I'm like very generous because it's all big pieces. I put like a, you know, like a half a handful in, a, in like two liters. And I'm like, yeah, well... For the medicinal benefits, it's really cool to boil it really long, you know? So I'm boiling it for like 30 minutes, you know? And then I was like, okay, well, let's have a first sip. It looks already like pretty dark brown. So let's have a first sip. I'm taking a sip and I'm completely like the whole, my whole mouth was completely like, ugh. It was like worse than any dandelion leaf, worse than anything ever bitter tasted. It was so bad. <laughs> It's like, okay, so I watered it down for like 10 liters and then I had it in the fridge and I drank it like every morning, um, but it was a hardcore thing. You know, every morning, like you wake up and like, oh, oh, and then like half a liter of super bitter stuff. But my liver really liked that, it's true. <laughs> yeah, but that's something definitely bitter is really, really, the liver loves bitter. So third on that big list, um, let's make it juicy and make it easy. Um, healthy glucose, healthy sugar. So sugar is not bad for your liver unless it's cane sugar, high fructose corn syrup, any kinds of artificial sweeteners or any processed sugar really. But the healthy stuff, the healthy fructose, the healthy glucose, your body needs that and especially your liver. Why? Because your liver here is your main form is the main organ that stores glycogen and glycogen is the, the storage form of glucose. So whenever you get in a stress moment or there's not enough glucose flowing in the bloodstream because you're a little bit, you know, you didn't eat for an hour or so or for two hours, then blood sugar goes low. What does the liver generously provides healthy glucose for, for your brain and you know that everything works well. But here comes the thing. Back to the cable. Here comes the thing. Most of us don't have any glycogen storage build up. Why? Because the liver is so overburdened. It's so clogged up. It's so mistreated. And on top, we are told, you know, don't eat sugar. Don't eat this. Eat more fat. Eat more protein. Keto diet, paleo, raw carnivore. Um, so the liver 
is in stress. When the liver doesn't have glycogen levels, uh, doesn't have glycogen, it's not just that your overall body suffers because your adrenals, you know, the little ones here, the two pairs that are this, this big in the back, they are getting, going nuts. They are firing. Adre adrenaline is very erosive to your blood vessels. It's very stressful if you have it on a daily basis, as you can tell with low energy and sleep issues and things like that. So the, the liver, when the liver doesn't have this glycogen level stored up, it's not just bad for the overall body. It's also bad for the liver itself. Because when the liver has toxins and chemicals, which it stores to protect the body, uh, in there, it heats up. It heats up. And one, the way, the only way to um, lower this heat and to cool down the liver is not just greens, it's glucose, healthy glucose. So what kind of things apart from fruits are very, very, very nourishing in this third point for the liver? What do you think? Apart from fruits, what does contain healthy glucose in order for us to restore the glycogen levels in the liver and improve your overall liver health? Honey, yes, Marilyn. Cucumber, I like it. Cucumber botanically is a fruit, but we let that pass through because most people think it's vegetable. Yarrow, yeah, yarrow as well. Yeah, raw honey. What else? What else? Come on, guys. Don't pretend you don't know it. I know you do. What else contains healthy glucose? Apart from fruits, what else is liver healing and sweet? Dates, yeah, Mar Margaret. Banana is a fruit, Cesar, it's fine. Parsnips, parsnips are a root vegetable and have some healthy glucose, that's true, goes through. Dates, yes. Come on. Papaya is a fruit, <laughs> maple syrup, tiny, tiny heck, frucht. Yes. What about potatoes? The potato. Yay, potatoes. Lots of healthy glucose, lots of um, complex starches, lots of minerals. If anybody ever told you that potatoes are an empty carb, then just talk to any gardener. Talk to any gardener who works with potatoes and they will tell you that this is complete. Why? Because potatoes are one of those root uh, crops that draw the most nutrients out of the out of the earth. This is why they need to be moved all the um, every year or every season. So potatoes, sweet potatoes. Yeah, George, exactly. Sweet potatoes, potatoes. Perfect. Yeah, Mark, I like this. I like this. You immediately put <laughs> two potato emojis there. I love it. Yes, sweet potatoes, um, we had already dates, honey, maple syrup. Um, so those are all like options. You don't, even if you can't eat fruit because you get bloated or you're not, you know, you ha don't have the microbiome um, adjusted to it and the right bacteria to break down fruits. Um, we have fructose malabsorption or wh whatever stamp you got from whoever. Um, you can still do other things. You can maybe do a potato soup or some sweet potatoes here and there. Maybe you can eat a few dates, maybe not. But there are options. Um, number four, this is already <clears throat> squash. Yeah, squash has a little bit of sugar. It depends on which um, which type of squash. Beetroot. Yeah, beetroot has sugar. That's true. That's why I don't like beetroots. I made some beetroot hummus, um, but I don't like the sweet. You know, the sweet and salty. I'm always like, give me sweet or give me salt, but not together. Um, but the beetroot hummus turned out pretty well. It was just chickpeas. A little bit of avocado and beetroot. That's it. Some turmeric and some um, spices. That's it. Really good. Went well. Okay. Third. So we have, um, let me just rinse and repeat. So what the liver loves, number one, sleep. Greens, healthy glucose. Four, low fat. Low fat. Katie already said it because Katie knows everything. She really does. You know, in the, in the Gut Feeler Academy, it's like Katie always is there. She's always very active in the community, posts the best recipes. People are always like, oh, I want to eat that too. I think, Katie, you even, you even suggested that we have like a gathering, right? Um, like a workshop or in-person in, in -person Gut Feeder Academy 
meet up. I would love to have that, by the way. Fun is a really good idea. Uh, maybe let's wait a few months more until the, uh, you know, the virus thing <laughs> hopefully calms down. So number four is fat. Fat, low fat is really, really important, especially if you can't do it like all day long for whatever reason, because you're not used to it, at least do it until noon. At least do it until noon to make this healing window for your liver as long as possible. You know, through the night, liver starts healing. Then you do some good, healthy stuff in the morning. You have some healthy glucose and, you know, get the lymphatic system hopefully moving with exercise or rebounding or whatever. And then you make this window as long as possible. Um, so healthy fat, are, um, healthy low fat is really, 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 really key because it is the, it's the hardest to digest. It's the hardest to digest. And that's not something, you know, that's esoteric or there's medical medium or stuff. This is like bare, bare university medicine. You know, this is what I learned in the first year of studying medicine. First year, how the digestive system works, what gets broken down, where carbohydrates, stomach protein, and then this is where it starts. So the carbohydrate digestion starts in the mouth with two different types of enzymes. Then in the uh, in the stomach starts the protein digestion and the carbohydrate carbohydrate digestion continues. And then in the small intestine, in the small intestine, really far down already. So after the stomach, small intestine, this is where the fat um, the fat breaking down starts with the help of the pancreas and with the help of the liver. Um, with the gallbladder releasing bile into the ductus. Um, so that's that's how it is. And when the fat, you know, at that point, because your liver is so weak and the bile is not concentrated enough and maybe there's some pancreas, you know, pancreas is tired and overworked, and then the fat doesn't get broken down, what happens is that food rots in your gut. It just sits there mm. like an egg, you know, like an egg just sits there and starts to putrefy. Food putri putrefying in your, <laughs> what a word, food, food rotten in your gut is one of the worst things you can have because it pr produces these leaky gut syndrome, which really is just a gas called ammonia produced in your intestines, which can penetrate the cell walls because it's like a ghost. And it, and it can go anywhere. It can go into your brain. It can inflame the nervous system, gives you anxiety gives you all kinds of symptoms, lowers, the Im lowers your immunity, is a really, really, really big trigger for all kinds of um, health conditions. And that's just because people, you know, they think, okay, I'm doing keto, I'm already having in the morning my peanut butter milkshake, <laughs> whatever, um, with like two raw eggs, I make it really disgusting now, um, and of course, no sugar. And, um, but this is like, this is, this is very much um, hitting you in the back. Even if in the beginning you might feel better because you eat less processed foods and a little more greens, hopefully, um, it will bite you in the butt. It will, it, it just will. So those are <laughs> number four, low fat. And do it, experience it for yourself. You know, if you ever, um, if you ever need some more energy, just lower your fats. Sometimes it's as easy as that. Number five, Last but not least on that list, what your liver loves and what your liver needs um, in order for you to increase liver loves and what your liver needs um, in order for you to increase your, your energy and to improve your digestion. What is it? What is it? Shall we go to the fridge again? Shall we go to the fridge? I like to walk a little bit because my butt is sweaty as well. It is, where is it? Have you seen it already? Have you seen it, what I'm getting out of the fridge? What's number five? What's number five? I know you know it. What's number five? No, it's not apple cider vinegar. No, no, it could have been, but no. No, apple cider vinegar internally is not a good idea. I made that mistake three years ago when I started channel produced one video where I recommended apple cider vinegar for slow stomach acid, and it was worst mistake ever. Um, I made another video um, about why apple cider vinegar is actually really toxic if you take it internally. Um, check that out, Ahmed. So what are we having? Spirulina, Katie, in the fridge? Yeah, could be. No, it's on the bed right now. Ginger, aha, uh -huh, interesting, love it. Yeah, I like it. 
Natasa, um, coconut water, like that too. What was the question? What's the fifth thing that your liver loves and that I just picked out of the fridge? Ginger, aloe, these are all great things. Everybody thinks it's ginger, huh? I don't have ginger in the fridge. I have it there drying out on the cupboard, unfortunately. No, it's yellow. It's yellow and it's sour. Uh -oh. um, it's yellow and it's sour and it helps to, it's basically like a massage for the liver. You can massage the liver from outside, muscle menos, not really because there are some ribs, hopefully, um, but you can massage the liver from inside. And one of the easiest way to do that is lemon water shots. So lemon water shot, meaning 15 minutes before um, lunch and dinner, or also in breakfast, if you like to do lemon water before your celery juice or after. Um, one a half a lemon, or you can do one lemon if you want. I usually just do half lemon. Um, just squeeze it into a tiny bit of water and just, you know, like the word shot says, um, instead of alcohol, just drink lemon water shots. Really cool, has a ton of enzymes. This little guy here, a ton of enzymes, some healthy glucose, and it stimulates your stomach acid as well. And your bile production. Bile is produced from the liver and then stored in the gallbladder and will help with prepping for the digestive work that is to come when you eat lunch and when you eat dinner. There you go. That's it. That's it. Rinse and repeat five things your liver loves. Sleep, greens, healthy glucose, low fat, and lemon juice shots. What do you think? Are you um, any of you already doing this stuff or any, any new ideas that came up? I would love to hear. Anything surprising? Turmeric is great too. Turmeric is orange though, I think. Anything surprising? From the five things? If not, it's good too. Rinse and repeat. I always, always think rinsing and repeating is really, really important. Okay, I'll let you guys type. And while you type, we're gonna take a few minutes to come to your questions. Answer me your question. I hope this was helpful so far. Uh, let me know. I always like to be a little bit goofy, so it's not that dry. Um, okay, guys, you hold on there. I'm gonna put the, um, the greens into the fridge because it's like 30 something Celsius in here. And those poor greens, they need to stick in here for a little bit longer. Yep. Okay, what are your comments, anybody? We'll start the lemon water shots tomorrow. I like it. I like that. Great, Margaret. Do it at least for seven days. I usually recommend when people start something new, seven days. Don't do it if you don't wanna do it for seven days. Because to see any any effect, um, seven days minimum. Why is this this way? Should be that way. Uh, yeah, George. So the, there was no um, with the five things. They are all important. It's not like this is the number one. But if there would be a number one, then it would be sleep. You're right. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, good. let's look into your questions. Remember three question marks before your question. So I'll turn this around. Um, so I see that it's your question. I just got this new thing here. You know, I'm not much into, you know, jewelry and stuff, but this is an organite device. So it actually helps with balancing electromagnetic, um, the electromagnetic field, which I love. And it feels really good. It feels really good. Although it's weird to have something around my neck, but I'll do it for that one. And it's the infinity symbol and it's the color of my eyes. See? <laughs> okay. Right, let's do this. Okay. George, I wonder if it matters which way a person sleeps on the left side, back or right side, 
with the liver being busy at night fixing our problems, which position makes it most able to work? So I usually recommend to just sleep like you feel, you know, like it feels right. Um, from what I heard and from my experience, um, sleeping on the right side and like, you know, kind of on the right, on your right side curled up is the best for the internal organs for cleansing and detoxing. Also, um, I personally, I really like to sleep with my head in the north and with my feet in the south. It usually just turns out that the bed is in that direction anyway, in this case, for example. And then I adjust, you know, in the, in the bed a little bit, like north, south. Um, so that's what I do. Um, maybe other gut feeders have other experiences. What your favorite sleeping position is where you rest the most. I heard that sleeping on your belly is not that healthy and um, sleeping on your back apparently is not that that restorative but hey you know let's let's hear from your experience guys um, maybe somebody wants to help George out here and just share what your experience is from my personal experience and um, what I've read and learned is that sleeping on the right side is the uh, the most restorative vamos Magda, hi Peggy, how long can you take zinc for and is it safe for children to take? Thank you. Yes, so the right kind of the right kind of zinc, right? We're talking, this is really, really important. So zinc in general, all the stuff that you can buy on the internet or worst in the pharmacy or, you know, health food store, that stuff is just trash because it contains zinc oxide or other forms of zinc that plants can absorb but not you. And if you can't absorb it, what happens is it burdens the liver and you pay for it. So in both ways, monetarily and um, with your health. So you want to make sure you have a liquid zinc sulfate, which doesn't contain alcohol. This one is really good. I personally like that one. It's from Good State. Um, I recommend that brand. You can get it on uh, peggyshomer.com slash shop. I have a direct link for this sink. I think I even have a coupon code where it can, you get some percentage off. Um, it's very, very good. It lasts forever. It's really, um, you just need 15 drops. It's very concentrated. It's clean, just pure water and liquid zinc sulfate. And yes, your children, wherever they live, unless they live somewhere in the jungle and they just, you know, don't have any electro smoke and they never saw a toxin, they need zinc too just like you, just a smaller dosage. So five drops, for example, is good. Even if, if, if the kid is under 10, I would start with three drops. Um, but yes, zinc will be super good, especially kids, you know, stress in school. I personally, I had um, ADHS, ADHD, and I was so, um, you know, so stressed all the time. I would have loved zinc, you know, zinc would have been so good for my nervous system and all the toxic heavy metals that I had and inflamed the nervous system, I couldn't focus and concentrate. So it would be so good. Yes, yes. Huh. It doesn't want to show. It just turns around all the time. Peggy and jewelry. Okay. Ha, Lynn, Peggy, what do you think about the mm, vaccine and will you be having it? So I'm not gonna say that word because YouTube tends to just, you know, cut me off in that thingy, so I'm a little bit, you know what vaccine we're talking about, the C vaccine, you know? So Lynn asked uh, what I think about it and will I be having it? I mean, what do you think, guys? I'm, I'm absolutely not, you know, poisoning my body with um, extra extra pathogens and some toxic heavy metals and maybe even paying for it. Absolutely not, it's complete BS. Um, the, I, I have to do another video about this vaccine thing um, don't, you know, um, you can't get me into prison if you don't take your vaccine and then you come back like, oh, I got COVID, da, 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 da. you know, just for many, this is my very goofy medical disclaimer. Um, this is complete, complete nuts. This has a lot to do with government, with pharmacies. Do you have any idea how many billions of dollars or euros or whatever currency you're in are made from vaccines? You can't even imagine it. It's more than the supplement industry altogether, probably. So there is a lot about, you know, getting you in a fear state so that you actually, I had, I had, I, I have a few people who are like, 
I'm just waiting, waiting to travel for my vaccine. And I'm just telling you, here, this is your vaccine. Tell, take, take, take this, you know, this is your, your uh, protection. That's a smart one. Or meditating or eating more wheatgrass powder or being nice to your liver. That's a way to support your body, but not with this fear-based um, thing to, to um, try to protect yourself. This is, this, is not, this is not a way to protect yourself. This is definitely not working. So that's my, my answer. Um, I might go into depth about that, but it's like a huge topic with the whole vaccine thing. So I don't want to open that up, but no, I'm not going to have anything. Um, yeah, let's see. McKinsey, Swanson. Well, which one is your first name in there? Swanson or McKinsey is probably not your first name. Um, how to heal my gut without being restricted. I've done medical medium protocol for six months and see lots of results in skin, stomach issues. Can I heal gut, then go back to eating more fats? Yeah. Yeah, but um, make sure to remember that when all your symptoms are gone, and I mean, I'm talking about all the symptoms, you feel super energized, you know, you sleep like a baby, da 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 da, da. Then you need one month more, minimum, to, to um, be on the same, do the same healthy thing that you did before you start changing anything. Because just because the body doesn't show your symptoms doesn't mean that it's healed. It just means that, ah, you know, we are not like completely knocked down and struggling to death anymore, but there is some space. But if you immediately, this is why so many people are tripped up on the healing journey because they feel a little better and then they go back to toast, you know, toast with butter and some eggs for breakfast. Talking about UK. <laughs> that was basically Scotland breakfast, very typical, and some sausage, some bacon stripes on top, right? Um, so that's why we often get tripped up in our healing journey. And I made the same mistake. You know, I love things like milk chocolate, latte macchiato, um, McSunday, McDonald's ice cream, you know, all of that. And when, as a student, as soon as I felt a little bit better, I got back to that one and just stayed in this vicious cycle. So yes, you can come back to eating healthy fats, I would still recommend to do that later in the day. Late, the later in the day, the better. And look that those fats, they are easy to digest. So avocado is great. Coconut meat is great. Nuts are harder to digest. If you take nuts, soak them first. You know, just being mindful and being mindful of, you know, that is actually a fat that you're eating. And it's not, there's, nothing, there's nothing bad about fat. It's just um, when you're on a healing journey, it's not very helpful and it doesn't speed up anything. It just slows things down. Does that help? Let me know. San, gut feeler member. In the last year, I have gone from coffee to mate. Great. Now black tea. Hmm. It slowly became a daily. Any advice on fighting this caffeine addiction? Yeah, I do. I think I have it in a video. San, you should, you should know. As a gut feeling member, you should have watched all videos and ready to, this is a uh, thingy, support other people, other gut feelers um, with their questions. <laughs> so I have a video on that one. Um, personally, with the caffeine addiction has a lot to do with your adrenals and being basically, Im imagine people, maybe you're one of those people yourself, that's fine, don't tell anybody. Um, imagine some of us who like to have new things and then what we usually do is we get our credit card out. Do we have a credit card here? No. Um, we get the credit card out and we just pay for it and pay for it and pay for it, but it's not, you know, it's not the real money. It's the real, the, uh, it's not backed up. It's just living on a credit and living on a credit. The same, exactly, like 100% the same thing happens with caffeine. People like, especially in their 20s, in their 30s, you know, maybe even as a, as a teenager, to get through stress, to get through exams, to get through university, to start a business, whatever. They just live on a credit card from their body. You know, they live on it. And at some point, the body is just so used to it, to get its drugs, that it becomes almost impossible to get off it. Because when you stop drinking coffee, you're going to feel like this for a little while. You know, the body will just need some time to relax. And the adrenals, this actually really feels actually really good. Um, the adrenals need some time to relax. And the, the balance, you know, needs to be restored. So one of the ways to 
get off caffeine would be juice fasting. Lots of healthy glucose, lots of nutrients. So the adrenal make it easier for the adrenals to recover. Taking a, a week, in, week off, you know, week or two weeks off, the more days off. So you don't have any pressure. You don't have to perform. You just, you know, you just do your thing. You chill. Um, come to Mexico. Mexico. Hola. Buenos dias. Um, so those are some things to, to consider. Also having healthy glucose is really, really important for you. Um, to get off the uh, caffeine addiction. I wouldn't call it that way. It already sounds really like, oh, you know, that's me. I have a caffeine addiction. But hey, great. You already made it from coffee to mate, you know, and to black tea. So uh, I hope that helps. Let me know. Okay, let's do one or maximum two more questions. I'm scrolling. My eyes are a little bit tired. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> okay, Emmanuel, you put the question marks in the wrong place, but I still saw it. So the question marks, three question marks in the beginning of the question. Um, what about Manuka honey? Manuka honey is a medicinal honey. It's a very specific type of honey, which is very ex extra antibiotic uh, and anti, uh, antifungal, antibacterial, antiviral. It's very strong. Um, it's a medicinal honey. So I usually recommend to people to really use it in this medicinal way and not to use it, you know, to sweeten your tea and to just put on a crap or put over fruit all the time, but to have it as this medicinal um, treatment. So if you already bought this super expensive honey, please use it. Um, but raw honey, just raw organic honey will do the job just fine. So, um Remember, guys, three question marks in front of your questions. Oh, gosh. One second. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Mark. Mark, Mark, Mark. Peggy, the best method to fight fatigue. I follow medical medium each day, still sluggish. Um, liver, liver. That's all we talk about. Fatigue, liver. Fatigue, liver. Fatigue, liver. Mark, you got to know that liver, as I said before, is a huge organ. It takes a long time, unfortunately, a long time to recover. So that's normal too, especially when you're in this detoxing phase and you're doing all the medical medium and the more hardcore you do it, or sometimes the more sluggish people feel and the more tired they feel. And they think like, oh, I should eat more protein. I should eat more fat. This is not working. It's exactly working because detoxing and cleansing is not an easy job for the body. It actually creates um, micro damage as well because those toxins, when they come out from the liver you know, or from the brain or wherever they come from, um, they need to get out. And while they're getting out, they're creating some micro injury. This is why this grass, this green stuff, you know, everything green is so important. And this is why the zinc is so important because it helps with the scar healing inside your body as well. Um, so it's super normal that in the beginning or like even six months in or even a year in, you're still dealing with fatigue. Um, what you can try, Mark, is to have some days where you, for example, you do some juice, you know, some juice days, maybe just celery juice and a, and a and the fruit juice to get the healthy glucose in and just experiment with what your body likes. Sometimes it's also um, not just about diet. You know, sometimes there's, I mean, it's rarely just about diet. Um, I talk about that a lot in the other videos. So also looking at the other components that are in play, you know, maybe it's the sleep, maybe it's your thinking, maybe it's your emotional well-being. Maybe it has to do with, you know, you um, learning what this will teach you, you know, what's the, what's in it for you. Like, where, why are you manifesting that symptom? Because there's always something that I believe that healing is really a lot about not just getting better, but about us to become more of who we want to be. And it's like almost like internally life pushing us forward. And fatigue is just a, a really, really cool symptom for um, learning something about ourselves. What that is in your case, I don't know, but you do. So you could do some of the gut feeler exercises that I, that I share in the other videos. You know, where you instead of fighting against the fatigue in case you're doing that, you're going to welcome it and you're going to see like, hey, how does it serve me right now to be fatigued? Maybe 
somebody is in a job that they don't like maybe you know like an ex like a permission slip for something else you know what is it was it allow you to do or not to do so um i like medical medium and sometimes it's at the same time i think it's not enough it's not it needs to look deeper we're not just you know what we eat and we're not just oh there is this 5g tower and whatever i think we're much more powerful than that as a human as a human species and as individual humans i think the body is really like an antenna which signals us and allows us to interact with our environment and really be like a you know like a tree in in the forest to really feel and to observe um to observe and to learn more about ourselves and to grow stronger that was a long answer da 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 okay guys one more one more okay Okay, I have two questions here, one from ML and one from April Tough, which are very similar. So the one is from April, um, I drink green tea, what's your opinion on green tea? And then ML, what do you think about matcha? Matcha is a specific type of green tea, I think from China. So um, don't drink the, if you really, 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 really like the green tea and you like the taste and whatever, um, and you're healthy, you know, go for your green tea. It's not necessary to drink green tea because of the antioxidants and makes you anti-aging and whatever, what God knows what. There are so many other foods that are not, um, you know, not stimulating your adrenals and not having a form of caffeine, um, which are mu much, much better to drink in the morning or in the afternoon or whatever. So I do not recommend to drink matcha, even if it's cool, you know, you have this... Um, Oh no, what is mate? Sorry, this one is mate, where you have this straw and everybody does it here. Like, you know, and everybody shares, of course. <laughs> Great virus protocol. And um, but it's not something that is, is super healthy for the body. There are better things, and I do not recommend green tea or matcha or mate or caffeine or black tea or um coffee. I still sometimes, you know, if I and when I'm out somewhere and I feel really good and I just would be just slice, you know, this almond latte macchiato, well, I just have it with a little bit of coffee. Um, but it's not a healthy food. It's not something that I uh, recommend and it's on a credit card. Always remember credit card, credit card bill comes back. Guys, thank you so much. I know there are more questions. There will always be more questions. I would love to, again, say thank you to you for joining, for being part of this, even if your question wasn't answered or you just joined in. You can always rewatch the episode. We also um, had a, sh a chat about what the liver loves and how the liver is connected with your energy levels and your gut health. It's very much connected talked about uh, things that the liver doesn't like. Uh, you had a lot of great um, answers and inspirations for that. And I'm looking forward to connecting with you soon here on the channel or somewhere in the Gutfield Academy or in the one-on-one -on -one consulting or some in some form through the Gut Healing Challenge. If you would just like to get started and you don't know what to eat and where to start, I still recommend I created this program with a lot of love and improved it all the time. Um, is the one week gut healing challenge, which gives you a meal plan and a shopping list and background information and some emotional support work to do as well, which is really cool when you just get started, you don't want to think, you just do that for a week. And it's very much helping with improving acid reflux, bloating, constipation, um, candida, SIBO symptoms, and just getting a good feel of, you know, how my what my body likes and what the body doesn't like. Okay, guys, thank you so much. I wish you all the best wherever you are and sending you lots of heat, a little bit of sweat, uh, if you like, from Mexico. And I see you soon. Bye.